resonate to myself and you know because they want to understand that your compliance officer has the credentials that make them comfortable and if you have policies that are thorough and and procedures that support those policies and you have a compliance officer in place who can articulate that and build confidence with the regulators and the financial institutions and all your business partners along the way because it's not just you know the banks and the regulators there are other companies that are afraid to do business with us because they're afraid of what will happen if we get, you know, if they come to rely on us and then we get found to be doing something, you know, that somebody <coughs> questions. So if you can, if you have that that infrastructure in place, then um, you know, then you're going to be a long way down the road in terms of being able to demonstrate and speak articulately about, you know, what your processes is, and then after that. Get ready to fill out a whole lot of forms, get a whole lot of fingerprints taken, background checks, financials, um, and answer the same question over and over again for every state. And smile while you answer the same question over and over again for every state because, and I'm just going to use this as examples, you know, Nebraska doesn't care that you've already answered all these questions for Florida or Georgia. You just need to make sure that you, you know, that you do this. You can put together a package of information, a thorough package, and keep reusing most of that with a few tweaks. But you need to make sure that you have good people in place and solid programs because they will come in and check. And um, it, the worst thing that can happen is for you to say you're doing something and have them come in and find that you're not doing what you said. Because once they find out that you're not doing what you said you were going to do, then they don't believe anything you said. And then if you thought the review was bad to start, it gets worse really, really fast. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Finson just recently uh, released their guidelines for virtual currencies and DAX. Could you uh, explain the basics of, of what? What do we think they say? All in five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> think, yes. Well, I guess let me start with the question. So who knows who knows where they were on on March 18th, 2013? When we launched. Yeah, exactly. And uh, how many of you that show hands had to read the guidance two or three times just to even start to get a sense for what it was dealing with? <laughs> who thinks they know what it means now? Okay. Not, yeah. Good. A few. I mean, I. I, I I have five points, I think I'll make those first about the guidance, and then I'll talk about some of the definitions that people are interested in. You know, because it's a serpentine where I have to figure out these definitions, and some people have asked me what some of these things mean. But I guess I'll throw out my five comments or questions about the, about the guidance first. Um, first is, it's a question, is the guidance new law? No. no. So I think it's a trick question, really. I think it could be both. So Vincent's position is that it's not new law. It, it is his guidance, and um, the base law is the money transmitter law, which is the, the bedrock um, um, rules uh, under the money service <coughs> laws. Um, but they've been um, interpreted to apply to um, virtual currency and what's called a convertible um, virtual currency. I do think, though, that there are legitimate questions about whether this is new law. Um, in order to describe how the money transmitter law work in the context of a virtual currency, Vincent had to invent a number of terms and definitions and concepts, administrators, exchangers, um, repositories, um, I mean, there are a whole host of terms that you would expect to see in some sort of regulation uh, or, or statute. And so I think it's a legitimate question about whether this industry um, should have received some sort of notice uh, and comment period about, about this. And there, there's some open questions um, about, about how it all works. I guess since it's not a new law, I want to dispel any confusion about whether there's a ramp up period whether there's a period of time for folks to comply. And the answer is no. I mean, if, if, if the law applies today, and it's just interpretation of how the, the law applies, you don't get 60 or 90 or 120 days to apply. Um, 